To get the best 80s home computer experience, you need to try out the Retro Virtual Machine Emulator. So, let's take a look. Hi and welcome to Bites and Bits. Emulating the old 1980s home computers is great fun. There are some fantastic emulators out there for pretty much any machine you want to play around with. But sometimes the emulators can detract a bit from the true experience of using this old hardware. Everything can be a bit too slick and modern. Games load instantly from files on your hard drive, there's lots of extra clutter on your screen, and you miss out on all the old sights and sounds of using cassette tapes, floppy disks and so on. Now recently I've been getting back into my home computers and I've been trying out a whole range of emulators looking to get that feel of the real thing. And thanks to a comment from one of my viewers, I was recommended to try out the Retro Virtual Machine Emulator. So let's download this and give it a go. So the emulator can be found at retrovirtualmachine.org. Now this is a multi-machine emulator that currently supports the Sinclair ZX Spectrum, the Amstrad CPC series. It does allow you to emulate a Toshiba MSX version 1 computer and then the Sega SG-1000 and master consoles. It is available, um, it was primarily a Mac OS application actually, but it's now available for both Windows, Linux, and they've also just released an optimised version for the Raspberry Pi. Now the best thing about this code is that it is still being developed with new releases and hopefully new machines coming out at a steady pace. So for this video, I'll be installing the Windows version. Now the download link here will give you a zipped file, so you just need to save that into a folder on your computer. Now I would advise creating a folder specifically for this project, as we'll soon be creating some machine files that you'll need to keep all together. Now once the file is downloaded, you just need to extract it, and you should get a single executable file, and this is the entire emulator. So booting that up should then take you to the main control screen. Now to create your first computer, you just need to click the hamburger menu item up in the top left corner, and from there we need to create a machine. So for this one let's go for a Sinclair ZX Spectrum. Once we select that, we can now select our model, so let's select a 48k model, and then we'll select one with an issue to motherboard. We now need to save this as a file on our computer. So I'm going to navigate to my Retro Virtual Machine folder that I created, and then I'm going to create a Machines folder in there. And then I'm just going to call this computer um, Spectrum 48K, and then just save it. So this will now build a virtual 48K Spectrum and drop that onto our list of machines. So if I just click it, it will open up our new computer as a TV screen. Uh, and of course, this is currently powered off. So moving the mouse over the screen will bring up the control menu at the top, and if I then hit the power button, it will boot me straight into the ZX Spectrum. Now this creation process for virtual machines is quite a novel way of using an emulator, and it does allow you then to have multi -machine, multiple machines of multiple types all set up in, in specific ways. So with our 48k Spectrum um, all, all up and running, we can now fine tune the way it looks and works. So in the top menu bar, you'll see a number of choices. So this hamburger icon here, it lets you load and save states, and, and these are full snapshots of the current computer state. So with these, um, you can save what you're doing so that you can come back to this exact point. Um, it's also great for saving game progress, and any special setup that you're currently working on. It just brings you straight back to where you left off. So moving across the menu then, we then have the power, pause, and warp mode, along with a reset button. And then they pretty much do what they say. The, the, the warp mode then, it just speeds up the computer, so you can quickly get through things like tape loads or long processing pauses, or anything else that you really want to skip over. You'll still be able to see what's going on, uh, it will just make everything happen at perhaps, I don't know, 20 times speed or something like that. So next then, we have the screen settings. 
Now this emulator is designed to give you the real look and feel of an old style CRT monitor. So there are a range of effects to play with, so just have a go and set it up just how you like it. So I tend to turn off the beam and the flicker uh, and then just tweak the scan lines and mask a bit to just get what looks like a proper TV screen to me. Again, minus those annoying um, beam and flicker effects. So next on the menu, we can adjust the sound and add extra hardware to our setup. Now, now there are some options currently in this extra hardware, uh, but hopefully then that will expand as the project develops. Now finally then there is a button here which allows us to um, switch what type of joystick we want to emulate. Um, so for the Spectrum of course we've got various things like Kempson and Sinclair and so on. And, and, and this setup um, that we're setting up here, it will then allow you to use your attached gamepad then as the particular Spectrum joystick that you've just selected. Now over on the right side then, we've got the tape and drives icons. Um, so, so various tapes, discs and SD cards will appear here when you've got those attached. Um, but we're going to come to that in uh, more in a second. So at the moment, let's just use this full screen button to drop into a bigger view so that we can play with the computer. Now one of the great things I really like about this emulator is the way it handles using it as a real computer. So at the moment, we're sat in front of our portable TV working on our ZX Spectrum. And we can just type on the keyboard as normal, and perhaps we could type in a small program here. Now, if I want to save this, I can either, as we saw before, jump up into the menu and create a complete machine save state, or I can actually use the attached cassette tape recorder, just like on the real machine. So if I hit this cassette icon, you'll see the tape recorder pop up beside your monitor. So first we need to insert a blank tape. So if you hit the pause button, that will bring you up the tape menu. This allows you to insert an existing tape, or as you can see here, we can create a new one. So let's make a new blank tape. So the tapes you make, you can save them in a range of formats for the spectrum. So for this, I'm going to use TZX which is just sort of the standard one people, people go for. So we now need to save the tape file somewhere on our PC. So I'm going to create a folder for those saves, and then I'm just gonna give it some sort of name. So what, once that's created, and we've, we've clicked OK, you'll see a list of the tape contents in this tape menu. Now, now of course, at the moment we've got nothing on there. It's also worth pointing out at this point, so, so when we're going to be saving onto our tape, or, or some of the discs as well, you do need to make sure that the right protect switch is turned off down here in the corner, uh, otherwise of course nothing is going to work. So we can close that uh, tape pop-up, and you'll see our tape is now in the machine. So we can now go off and save our program. So with the tape recorder still open, we can still type on the computer, so if you type in the command save, then inverted commas my code and press enter. Um, so, so for this, obviously we're using a ZX Spectrum. So these keywords are on various keys. So the save keyword is on the S key and inverted commas then if you're on a PC keyboard will be control P. So once you press enter, the Spectrum will now be prompting you to start the tape recorder. So hit the record button. You then need to hit a um, return key on the keyboard. Um, you can hit any key you want. Uh, obviously the space key is the break key here, so don't press that one. Uh, and you should then see and hear the code being saved to tape. So that will run through. Uh, and once you get the OK message, make sure you stop the tape recorder. Now, now I have to admit that I, I really do like this touch to the interface, uh, as it is really just like having the real thing and having your little cassette tape recorder sitting there beside your computer. But anyway, so, so if you now hit the pause button on the tape recorder, that brings back up that tape menu uh, pop-up, um, you'll see a list of the saved data on the tape. So that's saved our code to tape, so let's now have a go at reloading that. So close that tape pop-up again, and you'll see the tape back in the tape recorder. And But this time, if you look on there, you'll see it'll have a file name, and then, a, in effect, a position displayed. So we can rewind the tape now until we get back to our program code, and you'll see that now listed as our program. So in this position, the, the tape will play back from where we saved our program. 
So back into the menu here, we can clear the code that's in there at the moment by hitting the reset button, and that then will reset and clear all of our memory. So just to confirm, if I now press list, which is on the K key, um, there is nothing in our ZX Spectrum. So we can now load our code back in. So um, if we use the J key to get the load um, keyword, and then the control P twice again to get our double inverted commas, and then press enter. And the spectrum is now waiting for the tape to start. So go back over there and hit play on the tape machine, and you'll hear the code coming in, and you will see the code loading up into the spectrum. So once that's all loaded up, don't forget to stop the tape recorder again. So if I now type list again, our code is back loaded in. So that's using the tape recorder then for our own saves, and of course that would work as well for save games in some of like the adventure games and so on. But we can of course use it for loading game tapes, uh, and it's pretty much the exact same way. So if I go onto the tape player, and if I hit the stop eject button, this will actually take me straight to the file selector. So I can go off and I can find a game tape and put that into the machine. And again, I, I do have to now go through the proper process of, of going onto the spectrum and asking it to load the tape. And once it's waiting for the signal, I can just press play on the cassette tape recorder. So with commercial games, you've got a few minutes worth of loading time, but quite often you'd get a loading screen to at least have some interest in front of you. Um, but even that took a minute or so to load. And this is where the warp mode comes into play. So if I hit that, uh, the whole machine is put into turbo speed. We can still see what's going on, and we can then return back to normal speed whenever we want. So here, I just return back to normal speed so we can watch the final steps of the loading screen coming in. But then once we get past that, we're going to have a longer wait for the actual game program to load in, so I can just go back into warp, and that will save me a lot of time. So once a game is loaded, warp modes will, will usually detect this and stop, but, but sometimes you might need to actually manually hit the stop button yourself. So as well as this then, especially if your game uses multi-loading sections, do make sure that this tape has stopped between sections so it doesn't run into the next one. If, if it does, you can of course just hit the rewind button to jog back one or two sections and get it in the right place. But once that's all loaded in, we should now have our game up and running as normal. Now, as I mentioned at the start, um, this emulator does let you run a number of different home computers, and they all work in pretty much the same way in terms of setting up the virtual machine, and then running it, putting disks and tapes into the drives. Um, but because we're going to be working it as if it was the real machine, um, we really do need to go and find some computer manuals to work out what commands that machine uses to load our programs and, and really get ourselves into using that machine. And I, I think that is really all part of the fun of using this emulator. So for example, uh, we could set up an Amstrad CPC 464. I can then go online, and if I do a search for the CPC 464 manual, I, I, I can easily find those and download them. So here I have a PDF copy of that. And if I have a look through that, you'll see that it takes me through the whole process of how to load tapes, set up the machine, and again, most of these computers did come with little programming manuals um, as well, which will show you how to use their basic language. So let's, let's see if we can load a game in here. So I've downloaded a copy of Renegade. But what I can also do is I can usually find online the cassette inserts for these. So if I find this one, um, you can see that I can read through here and it tells me all about the game, but it also tells me importantly how to actually load and run it in my Amstrad CPC. Uh, and here you can see that instead of using the load command, which just loads in sort of normal programs, this one uses the run prompt to actually then run, well, well both load and run the code all in one go. So I can follow through the instructions here. So if I type in run with a single inverted commas, you can see that it's now waiting for some program code. Um, I can now press play on my um, tape recorder, and there we go with the code loading in. And again, that will now work 
as if we were using that real Amstrad CPC. So, I hope you found all this useful. This retro virtual machine emulator is, is a really fun way to play around with these old machines. It's great for getting the real feel of using that computer. And that's even if the actual emulator features itself are not quite as full as some of the other applications that we tried out, something like Spectaculator and so on. Um, we don't have access to sort of micro drives and lots of different add-ons to our computers. But if, if you want to have the pleasure of using these machines as close to the way as they were intended with a really nice user interface, then I do highly recommend giving this application a try. So, I hope you've enjoyed that. If so, please do click that like button and subscribe to the channel for lots more retro computing, gaming, modding and making projects. I look forward to seeing you again very soon, and bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.